Hey, thanks for joining me, as always. Um, Supreme number one. I have very little to say about this because I remember picking it up based on the Liefeld name alone. It's a new issue number one. Maybe it's something interesting. Maybe it's kind of cool. I will give it credit. This cover is pretty fucking awesome. Um, I uh, just got done reviewing... Young Blood number three, and in the back of that book, there's a little preview of Supreme issue, the issue of Supreme coming out. And the final page of the preview is this drawing, which was just reused as the cover, or maybe they did the cover first and they threw this in here. Who knows? I don't care. But you can tell they took this drawing, the black and white, you know, line work, and then the traditional coloring, and punched it up with some different kinds of coloring. The the pose is interesting. The foreshortening, the fists coming forward. I dig it. I really dig whoever did this, like, painting. I mean, I'm looking at it. It kind of looks like airbrush and a painting, like, hand-painted. And it reminds me, I mean, I'm going to nerd out here a little bit for you, but I see that the first thing I think of where I saw something like that that I recall was in Star Trek VI, The Undiscovered Country, right at the beginning where the planet explodes and there was that those shock rings exploding out. That's the first time I ever saw anything like that. That looks really cool. Like whoever did this made it made a really good cover. And then I don't mind like the silver foil title of Supreme and the image logo. Like that is a good cover. In my opinion, I, I sold. Hook me up. Pray to God there's a good story in it. No, there's not. Well, all right, I'll, I'll be honest. I'll say no. I remember like reading this once the first time it came out and I'm like, I think I'm done. I don't need any more of these. Liefeld, creator, writer, inker. So he's inking this shit. Um, I guess he decided to stop inking his own books. Um, let me see, because I was just talking about in this Young Blood number three how he stopped inking himself. This is August '92, and this is November. The Supreme is November '92, so he stopped inking himself and started inking at least occasionally on here. Um, Brian Murray again. I I, I kind of talk shit on him because he his color work I think sucks really really bad. And I've never seen a color job of his that I knew it was him and liked. I, I think coloring is his is not his thing at this point, at least. He's not a great artist in as much as when you think of the great artists of the day. But in the world of Image Comics and people that Liefeld brought on board, I mean, he's not bad. It's just, he's it's nothing memorable. He does try some different stuff. When you hand it over and say, here, draw this, and you give it to somebody that's got a different sensibility than typical Liefeld bullshit, you know, when he's like, he's going to spend all kinds of time on double page spreads that always kind of look stereotypically Liefeld. I mean, they're cool and they're energetic, but hand it over to somebody else and say, keep that energy, keep that vibe, but do what you would do. So let's see how well Brian Murray pulls it off in terms of, you know, his his actual pencil drawing and his composition. Because I am not going to be concerned about the coloring because it sucks. I don't mind this. Like, it's the sun and you get closer and then I guess you're coming up onto Earth and then closer. You got satellites. That's cool. You got some scientists. They, they can detect something coming in from out, outer space coming towards the planet. And... Um, this is a reasonably cool perspective shot, but I think he should have like, there's a different composition where you don't have like the part where he's coming down to the earth and cramming its focal point into the bottom corner of the book. I would have made these panels smaller, maybe put them side by side and move him down over here and maybe tilt. I mean, there's some other ways to do that. I don't think that is great, but it's very impactful I mean, when you think of a double page spread, this fist is probably drawn, the fist itself is like this big on the page. So, you know, it's kind of dynamic. <laughs> his hand just trails off the page. And I guess this is supposed to be his cape, so it's just a flat color. I would prefer the space to be just black with some glinting stars, but they didn't do that anywhere. It's just, Color design sucks. 
Now again, another big double page spread. Um, that's not bad. A lot of power, a lot of energy. I mean, what I, I interpret this as is he's coming in through the atmosphere. So just like the space shuttle or the, you know, the Apollo rockets and stuff like that, you're re-entering the atmosphere. So there's a lot of friction, a lot of heat. So that's what all this glowing energy around him is. There's a lot of power and energy and movement. So I'm, a, I'm on board with it. Again, this suck-ass coloring on this hand. Is that a human hand? And then, so he's pushing a button on a desk, I guess. And, but there's no, like, they had to color in the edge of the desk. Like, what is going on? And then you got, like, a giant furry turd or a, some kind of whatever the fuck that is. You tell me what that is. I mean, is it supposed to be a plant? Looks like a giant hunk of shit just standing upright with this guy in a silhouette with this all this coloring desk shit going on and these Venetian blinds behind him. Like, I get what he's trying to do, at least to his credit. Look, he drew a laptop in perspective. Liefeld absolutely cannot do that. So, you know what? Brian Murray won. Unless, again, Richard Horry, technical assistant. I was just going on about that over here on Youngblood number three. Richard Horry, technical assistant. So uh, you could tell the parts, I think, that Richard Horry did in that one. But either way, whether or not this is Richard Horry or uh, Brian Murray doing that, who knows? God, it's like big images, double page spread, double page spread, double page spread. So here you got, now again, this is Supreme, but he's supposed to be like a Superman analog. And they will go on to explain that. And this is another thing I almost forgot. Look up here. Volume 2? Like, this is the first printing in November of 92 of this book. But Volume 2? I could, The only thing I can imagine is that the character of Supreme, if I remember the character's fictional biography, um, is that... He used to be a character that existed on Earth, and then he left years ago, kind of like Superman in the 30s. He was Superman, existed a long time ago, and he disappeared, and it's like Superman is coming back to the modern world. So maybe that's like, an, like a gag. Like, Volume 1 doesn't exist, but we're pretending that it did, because this is Supreme coming back. This is Superman returning to Earth. Uh, if you know, if I'm wrong, and you know what that means, please correct me. But here you got, again, not a bad double-page spread. Um, that's a hard angle is bi bicep anatomy kind of getting lost in there. I hate the coloring background, that blurry, soft color palette, soft out of focus bullshit. That sucks. It's like he knew he was going to color it because Brian Murray color design, digital chameleon does color separation. I bet he just wanted to draw the figures and he's like, I'll color in the backgrounds on the computer and make it this blurry, fuzzy bullshit. So you got the team out in space. You got, you know, young blood iron, man. He's got a little bowl on his head. So does bad rock, I guess. I guess combat can exist in space because he's an alien. So of course he can die hard. He's an Android robot, man, but he can exist in outer space. Photon, he can exist in outer space. Whatever, right? Here's the team. The away team. Well, not it's it's a mix of away team and home team. Because the whole home team and away team thing. This is also another inconsistent thing. See how many fingers Bad Rock has? I always thought he always only had three fingers and a thumb. But here's Liefeld doing it. Four fingers and a thumb. And Kind of sort of the same over there. But inconsistent, to say the least. Trademark, copyright, Rob Liefeld. Inconsistent. And then another giant image. This is just a book of just giant images. But I can get the idea of done right with the right good writer and a good artist. Like a bunch of big opening giant splash page images to signify and focus on how significant this character is going to be in theory. I am Supreme. And so all these guys are like, so what? Who? It can't be. Combat knows who it is. Die Hard is like, bah. Like, he doesn't believe it. Um, it has some really fucked up proportions over here, right? Like, 
micro head, giant body, his hands kind of weird, but overall it kind of, you kind of, like it carries an impact, right? But that's some horrible proportions. I mean, look how big his abs are compared to his own head. And I wonder why it's like cut off, like why didn't he continue the cape off panel? Like, and Liefeld, you're the inker on this, you, butt, you dumb fuck. Like, when you're inking, and if he just penciled it to here, just continue the line. And then you can even continue the shadow, and then continue the color, and it looks like it's not just weirdly cut off here. It's really stupid. Oh, oh my god. Look at the surfboard combat song. Look at this giant round disc thing with little flare wings on the sides, right? Next panel, what's he on? He's on a little rectangular, like, little robot coffin thing good job guys quality control is just unmatched die hard stand ready just give the word my man um look whoever you are we represent the law on this rock you'll have to come with us and then combat interjects you supreme huh this worn out carcass couldn't be the supreme the legend who led my people to victory at maxia bah and so he's like you dare insult his honor so combat being a dum-dum just like blast supreme right in the chest and then what what is what is combat right in here it's like circle thing on the other page rectangular coffin shape thing here just weird amorphous blob shape there it's like they don't even give a fuck i like how they blast him and then supreme is just kind of like uh okay this works the the line work with the lighting even the coloring highlights kind of work and then kapow's or Krakow's somebody, presumably combat, we don't know, sends them flying somewhere. Not a lot of drawing going on there. I mean, look at that. What what was drawn in black and white line work in that panel? Not much. So then they all, they somebody yells Yarg, and they come flying at him. I guess this is supposed to be Die Hard coming along and smacking into Supreme. There's stupid bad rock, bad rock yelling yabba dabba doom. Throwing a little picture of the moon in the background there. Foolish pup. I don't mind that drawing of Supreme right there. That's some extreme foreshortening. But it's still kind of screwed up because it's like he's, he's going into the distance down, you know, away from us and coming towards us. So you shouldn't, this whole angle on this arm, this should be coming towards you. Like it should be. I, it's, it's hard to describe. Like, I think you know what I mean, but like, it should be coming at you like this. Like, if my finger was his arm, it should be coming towards you with shaft up against him like that, and we see the back of him. But instead, it's kind of like it's bent over like this, and we can still see the front of Die Hard over here. So it's the start of a good idea. But, foolish pup, back to your mother. Throws him down. Um, Bad Rock shows up. And it's not the greatest storytelling, but, um, oh, oh, right. To think the fate of the earth is in the hands of such, you know. So he dives at him with like a punch, but he just moves so fast. He was here, then he's here. He's lightning super fast, just like Superman. No, something, you know, we got... Uh, uh, Sentinel and Photon coming at him. You know, we're all fighting now. And suddenly they're really close to the moon. Like the moon's here and he throws him down into the atmosphere of Earth. But then suddenly they're like right next into orbit of the moon. They blast him. And then he crashes into the moon. So they traveled thousands of miles in the blink of an eye because in a Rob Liefeld comic, they pay attention to details like that. Smashes into the moon, and so they're flying down to get him, and then he comes up. Now Supreme is pissed. Look at the absolute lack of... I mean, they're in space, but... So I guess backgrounds don't need to be much, but they don't even draw space. They just... What is this color thing going on? And that This kind of sucks. And then here comes Die Hard. Now, how powerful is Die Hard? Like... His power level seems to vary. Supreme, basically Superman, is like super off the scale. So you got these two little dots coming towards each other, right? Visually, I kind of get it. And then again, they reproduce that explosive like shockwave in space, kind of like on the cover. 
So that's kind of cool. That, I, I would have put some stars, like it's still out in space, but what do I know? But, you know, Die Hard's fine. They're like, whoa, wait. And then Sun is like, no, hey, wait, we've acted hastily. Please allow us to escort you to a conference on Earth. He's like, okay, the fight's over. Jesus Christ. And they're like, everyone's talking about Supreme being back. And they're like, some people know who Supreme is and they don't believe it. Some people have never heard of him. But it's like a newspaper article. He's back. You know, after 50 years, he's gone. Supreme is back to Earth. So news, you know, a bunch of news reporters trying to find out what's going on. You got Youngblood and a bunch of government stooges talking about it. They're talking about it. They're trying to, you know, none of our known forms of spectral and molecular analysis can penetrate his skin. Um, his measurements accounting for 50 years worth of maturity for being a level 10, level 10 hyper being matches DNA. They're basically trying to confirm that this is him. So they're saying this guy's readings are off the scale in all categories. He's four to five times more powerful than anything in our instruments have ever encountered. So, of course, you got stupid bad rocks like, whoa, radical. It really is him. And Samson was like, holy shit. Like, this guy could have ripped us in half. So I like the idea that he's a super powerful being. And all the world leaders just like, wow, that is him. Backgrounds be damned. They're, who knows where they're at? Weird color design. Backgrounds be damned. He's like, he spent so much time on those splash pages. He's like, I'm going to draw a big face. And it's just in shadow. It would just, I just, you know, whatever. Gave some kind of expression to that guy here. And um, I mean, again, this is kind of a, they're trying something artistically. So I appreciate that. I appreciate, you know, the, the attempt, the weird, like, cut them off at the feet. This is a table at knee level. Hey, you want to join Youngblood? Boy, if I was Supreme, I'd be like, fuck no. You guys don't have feet. So anyway, he blasts out of the, the building and they throw in a background that's like a photograph of a real city. And um, so you hear words. Like, he, I assume he can hear these. Or maybe it doesn't, it's not really clear whether he can hear what they're saying or it's just we're getting to read it just as story points. Like, I want him monitored. And these are the ramifications of Supreme. Um, and then there's like different languages. There's Mexican and that type of stuff. And, and Supreme is just flying up out of the planet's atmosphere. Again, I don't like any of this coloring bullshit nonsense. Um, they're saying this Supreme is just the man we need to leave, lead the team. He would definitely increase the value of heavy metal, Mr. Gate, the, the bad, the super team. Um, Smithers, he would be heavy metal. No offense to our already elite members. It's still funny there's somebody called Smithers because you just instantly like, yeah, we're talking about the Simpsons. I'm sorry, but like an animal creature guy that's got like a triceratops head just looks stupid. Like a fish guy, he looks stupid. And you like like this dude carrying a little hammer. What are you going to do, buddy? Like go bust up some rocks? This is the one thing about this comic that I remembered for my forever that I was like, ooh, that's interesting. So anyway... Uh, we'll, we'll get into it right here, but it's like, do you have? How do you have a do you have a plan on convincing him to join us? It will take a considerable considerable amount of work, but it has been experiences. My experience in such cases that beings possessed of great powers may also possess great weaknesses. And so, Supreme, he's flying up out of the atmosphere. He's kind of doing this twirl, and it ends with him. He's crying, like he's sad. Whatever he just experienced moves him to tears. So I remember seeing that. I was like, oh, interesting. That is the last thing you expect from an Extreme Studios Rob Liefeld comic is a hero emotionally moved to tears. What causes a grown man to cry? Pain. So that's kind of interesting. He suddenly had me hooked. Um, I thought that was an, like, now why is he crying? What 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 is it that? sets him apart that makes him feel this way that, that was interesting i'm spending a, a moment talking about it because from the time i read that i was just like that's really interesting and i never saw another issue of supreme like i'm if i miss an issue like if i get issue one and then i miss issue two and then i see issue three 
when it wasn't something that blew me away and I'm not in love with the artist, I kind of don't care and I stopped picking it up. So unfortunately, if it was one of those things where I miss it, which is the case, I do have issue two, but um, I didn't get that until like a year ago. So I got this off the shelves, you know, back when it came out in the 90s. So I never did find out why this happened or if they even explained it. Now, like I said, I do have issue two. Um, do I... I'm just wondering if I've got it sitting out here. I don't. Anyway, do I remember, like I looked through it, but I don't know that they ever addressed, like was this specifically addressed? I don't know. But it's just left as kind of an ambiguous thing to me that makes me go, that is more interesting than anything they ever did with this book until they handed it over to Alan Moore and it became an award-winning, brilliant, genius comic book. So to Liefeld's credit, him and Brian Murray uh, were writers. So I wonder which one of them come up with this idea. Maybe I'm going on about it too long. Maybe some of you are like, this is stupid. Why? Who cares? He's got a tear in his eye. Who the fuck cares? I liked it. It gave an interesting twist to a character like a Superman character I've never seen before, especially for an issue one. It made me interested, and I never saw how it played out, and I don't think you'll ever see anything ever capitalize on the potential. So Liefeld is here going on about how awesome Extreme Studios is, how awesome Image Comics is, how much everyone else sucks. How badass he is and how good every, everything that they're going to produce is the greatest thing they've ever done in their lives. Young Blood Zero, the beginning. Like, the main comic is going and you're not getting any fucking story out of it. You don't know anything about anything. But they're like, Young Blood Zero, let's tell you the beginnings of the story. I don't know anything about them at all. There's no fucking thing about them that we have any information on. Um, coming soon, Blood Wolf. Yeah. And then, Infinity. Again, another third-rate Liefeld knockoff. I believe this is Richard Horry drawing with Eric Stevenson writing. I can't tell you anything about the story. I never read this because I just did not care. And it all starts with not liking the art. It's, there's nothing good here. I don't like any of it. And it was a hot girl. You have to at least be able to draw a hot girl. And I don't think that they do. I don't like it. I don't care about it. I feel like he kind of got a vibe with this big last panel. That's kind of a cool drawing. But that's it. That is Supreme. Um, a little bit of promise, not a lot of payoff. But they got smart when they, uh, however, Liefeld conned uh, Alan Moore into writing books for him. And Supreme became just brilliant. Nothing like this crap. They leave everything here behind and move on to whole other worlds of things that were way more interesting than this bullshit. But some interesting concepts never pays off. Doesn't that almost every Liefeld creation for Image Comics? Interesting concept, but never realizes its full potential. You know, you could say that about his Marvel works with X-Force, interesting concept that absolutely went on to this day. Deadpool, absolutely realized its full potential. Cable, you know. But after that, it's all a downhill slide. Anyway, that is all for Supreme. Thank you for joining me, and I appreciate it. Let me know if you, what are your thoughts on the book? What did you think about any of this? Am I way off on any of my interpretations of this? Let me know. That's all I've got for now, though, and I will talk to you next time.